the Arctic Ocean, five and a half million square miles of sea and ice. One of the most dangerous places on Earth. But every year, an extraordinary team of skydivers carve out an airport just 20 miles from the North Pole. Beside it, an oasis springs up in this frozen desert, Ice Camp Barnea. Five-star Arctic hotel. <laughs> the camp is a magnet for people with big dreams. I've just been dipping my boot at the end of the runway. <laughs> <laughs> Marathon runners. You're so tired, you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are. You want to die. Yeah. Champagne tourists. It's a long drive contest, apparently. And international scientists. It's sort of like a God made you a laboratory right out in the perfect spot. Amateur adventurers go in search of the ultimate experience. It's just like walking into a different world that you never would have dreamed or prepared for. We could be going to absolute carnage. <laughs> They have just three weeks to pursue their Arctic dreams before Barnea melts into the sea. <laughs> this is one season at the world's most extreme outpost. Welcome to the Arctic Ocean! It's mid-April, and Ice Camp Barneo is entering the final week of the season. It's full to bursting with groups in transit to and from the North Pole. Yes. <laughs> they, they, they don't see many women here in the season, so the uh, <laughs> first one they see. <laughs> the incredible runway at Barneo makes all kinds of adventures possible. The airstrip is carved from ice just one metre thick. Below it, a two and a half mile drop to the ocean floor. Yeah, unique people, unique experience. The morning flight has a very special cargo. Base manager Sasha is on hand to greet them. Our clients like to use the dogs for, to, to reach the North Pole. Huskies have been used to pull sleds for over a thousand years. Their handler, Raphael, is from Poland. I try to give some time to my dogs to go out from the cages. For six months a year, Raphael runs dog treks across the Arctic, leaving his wife and young child at home. And my family is not with me up here. This is the only friends what I have sometimes in the ice when I'm traveling with them. And of course, my emotion to them is quite strong. This year marks a changing of the guard. It will be the last trip for lead dog Wally. He will not go with me to the North Pole anymore. He's too old. 11 years is enough. Now it's just a good time for retiree time. I think it's more emotional for me, like for him, in the next year when I go to the North Pole and Wally is not in my team. It's, uh, I can say, it's a strange feeling. Yeah, it's one of your friends and he always follow you. Definitely I will miss him quite a lot. Wally's replacement, Nelson, has a lot to learn. For him, it's the first time being the ice. I mean, for him, everything is really new up here. He's really lovely. The only problem is he's also a little bit aggressive. Suddenly, he doesn't like anymore his friend beside him and just start fight. Raphael is hoping that Wally's experience will rub off on the young pup. They're heading out on a training run before Raphael's clients arrive. Yeah, 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 ha, ha. Yeah, animal. Yeah. Yeah. 
Back at camp, operations director Misha is giving some visitors a safety briefing. One day, uh, this uh, pressure can uh, fall down. Misha is a legend in the polar world for his groundbreaking expeditions. His experience is invaluable. This late in the season, the ice is starting to thin. It looks like uh, uh, very solid, huh? Yeah, but uh, uh, if you will step it uh, uh, there, huh? Eh? Oh. <laughs> There's no land in the Arctic. The ice and everything on it is constantly moving across the surface of the ocean. Misha can calculate the speed of the drift with a GPS. 35 minutes ago we had the 89.44.1. Uh, now we have the same uh, northern direction. Uh, it means 45 meters. We move 45 meters. For one day we can uh, move more than two kilometers. Let's go to Chicago. The ice airport receives up to three flights a day from Norway, 600 miles to the south. Today, an old friend of Barneo makes his return. How are you? Very good, nice to be back again. It feels so fresh here, it's like it's my first time. I better not say that to my customers, they'll think I'm a beginner. <laughs> Eric Phillips has been leading expeditions to the pole for 10 years. This season, he's been hired by four businessmen who'll make the trek north on skis. Before they set off, the team must agree their travel plans with Barneo's boss, Misha. What I was planning, uh, we can drop uh, all of you uh, here, but it will be not earlier than uh, six uh, uh, hours since now. Six hours? Because it's uh, half a day, we, we lose, otherwise we, you know, otherwise we should start from here. We it just is, yeah, yeah. can't make it faster. I understand that. We can begin from here, but it's more difficult. Most teams begin their expeditions with a short helicopter ride to a drop-off point east of the camp. They can then harness the drift of the ice, using it like a conveyor belt to help carry them towards the pole. But Eric's team are on a tight schedule. Work commitments mean that they must be on a flight home in just four days' time. And there isn't space on a chopper for another six hours. After a quick vote, the group decide not to wait. You would like to leave now? We would like to leave now. If we can't fly, but now. yeah. If we can't fly, then we leave now and we push to the pole. You don't want to wait for six hours? Why? Because six hours time, it will be um, uh, nine o'clock at night. By the time the groups are ready to leave, it will be midnight. We fly for half an hour. It will be 12:30 in the morning. We stop. We camp anyway. We can't ski. Ah, I see it. I am a little bit surprised, guys. You can do it. If uh, the weather will not change, I will repeat to you. Yeah. But if uh, something wrong, uh, your chances are getting much less. Yeah. Against Misha's advice, Eric's team has opted to start their trek from Barneo. But this means they will be skiing against the drift of the ice. For every two steps taken forward, they'll drift one step back. I'm just conscious that um, people have a limited time here on the ice, and uh, the more time we spend here at Barneo, the, the more time lost um, experiencing this incredible environment. We've been here three hours already. We don't even want to hang around another six hours, and then it may drift again and drift again. So maybe we've lost half a day of what could be a, what will be a fantastic adventure. Let's go! North we go! Manu! They're the only team this season to take on the pole from Barneo. Time will tell if it's the right decision. They were in big rush, I don't know why. They didn't want to wait and they decided to live here, which is fine for them. But I don't know about final result. See you guys in three day times at the North Pole, hopefully.
Ice Camp Barnea has opened up the North Pole to anyone who has the cash. The Arctic tourist industry is booming as thrill seekers search for the ultimate getaway. Alex Hearn is from London and runs his own networking business. He spent the last seven days on a trip to the North Pole with his dad, Simon. It was unreal. Absolutely the best thing I've ever done in my life. It was, it was just unreal. Awesome to do with a dad. Yeah, I mean, it was the most amazing thing I've ever done, apart from marrying my wife. But apart from that, that was good. He has to say that. I have to say it. No, no, I mean it when I say it. But it is good. It was amazing. Simon is a former army officer. Arriving at the top of the world was the perfect opportunity to display his regimental loyalty while hanging out with Alex. Let me zoom in, let me zoom in, let me zoom in. Wrong way around, Badge. <laughs> it's upside down. Badge, it's upside down. <laughs> there it is. Riding in Barneo's helicopters is the first contact Simon has had with the Russians since the end of the Cold War. I used to train to shoot these down years ago <laughs> with a tank ram. They are very reliable, very, very good machines. The helicopter isn't the only piece of Russian kit that Simon's got his eye on. At home, we have a little farm, a very small holding, but we have a couple of tractors on it, and I love tractors. I'm a bit of a tractor thing. It's, I've got a bit of a problem about them. And just over here, these two caterpillars, I'm dying to have a go on one. <laughs> the tractors are essential to the running of Barnea and out of bounds to tourists. But Simon won't take no for an answer. Can we have a go on it? A quick go? Uh, have a go. He actually is obsessed with tractors. So this is like a dream. A it's probably his best part of the trip. <laughs> Amazingly, this five-ton tractor was parachuted onto the ice. It was used to carve out the precious runway. I mean, that's pretty critical. Without that thing, we don't have an airfield. I'm tempted to say only the Russians could do it because they're just so used to this weather. I mean, for minus 40, carving out an airstrip is amazing. I think for, for my dad, this will be better than going for more pop. He loves tractors. They don't often get to play with a toy like that in the North Pole. <laughs> Made my day. A couple of miles from camp, Raphael is giving his team of Greenland Huskies a good workout. He steers the sled by giving voice commands to the two lead dogs. Ha, ha, yeah. Together, yeah. the pack can hit speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. Even travelling at such a pace, the animals yeah. can sense any weak spots yeah. in the ice. The dogs, yeah. Yeah. they're much more lighter like we are in our sled. And they really well feel that the ice. When they stop, it just means we should stop as well. When they stop to make camp, yeah, yeah. there's a chance for team bonding. I just clean the mouth and uh, face from the ice when they're breathing and running and uh, eat snow, scratch everyone and uh, pet him a little bit to make him happy and better relationship with me. And that's it. It's kind of, thank you for good day, thank you for good work. New recruit Nelson, the only Alaskan husky in the pack, seems to have settled in. Like the first training, he is perfect. It's nothing more to say about him. He was running quite well for this kind of young dogs, anyway, it's good experience. All dog teams have a finely balanced hierarchy. Fights are not uncommon. 
Nai! Nai was! Nai! Raphael must show them who's top dog. Nai! We say everything what is going wrong in your team is not fault of the dogs, it's your fault. You are human, you have the big brain, you should think for yourself and for them as well. When your dog's doing something wrong, it's simple, you don't train them enough. That's it. The Arctic ice is a dangerous place for both man and beast. Raphael loves his dogs, but last year an injury tested even the strongest of bonds. You cannot really get help much up here. The only way what you can do sometimes is just shoot this dog. It's believe me, it's difficult to shoot your friend. When your eyes is full, yeah, full of crying and, and, and you do that in a way after you don't feel really good. When I close my eyes, I still see this dog. And this is not nice feeling. It's something what can happen be, be really terrible and, and I hope so be never more repeat to me. As Raphael collects snow for cooking, he spots an ominous shape on the horizon. This direction, yellow point. There have been sightings of polar bears in the area. It's not that many seals up here. He's too far away in the north. It means the polar bear wants to meet up here. He mostly is really hungry. I have revolver, uh, 44 Magnum, just for some case when something happens and we get the polar bear. Don't forget, we are the guests up here. He's in home. It means when he is nice, we take camp away, dogs away, and we go away. When he is aggressive, we try to scare him. That's it. Come on, boys. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Respecting that he is in the bear's territory, Raphael decides to head back to the safety of Barnea. The training run was a success. The team is ready for Lead Dog Wally's last expedition to the top of the world. I think my dog is always ready to go to the North Pole. Me as well. Barneo runs around the clock, but the staff do get some time off. Bad weather has closed the runway, and the tourists have taken over. Actually, the first batch in my life, and it's in North Pole. When the weather clears, activity of a different nature is underway. Barneo is not just for tourists. It's also an important research station for an international community of scientists. They come here to gather data and make experiments that are only possible in this extreme climate. OK, that looks good. One of the most surprising members of this scientific group is 17-year-old Eton schoolboy Parker. You know, I grew up in uh, Palo Alto, California, and then I moved to London when I was nine. While his friends are busy with last-minute revision for exams, mm -hmm. oh. Parker has been trekking to the North Pole with expedition leader Doug Stoop. I actually have my first A-level three days after my flight back to London. God. My school is, is pretty supportive, but they do have some issues, I think, with, prior, with my priorities. They don't feel like, a lot of the time, they don't feel like my priority is the school, which is a fair point, and to an extent, it's true. The Arctic is one of the most hostile environments on Earth. Last year, tragedy struck during an adventure holiday to a glacier in the region. Six months ago, 
A student from Eton was uh, was killed in a polar bear attack. Uh, I actually knew the 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 person who was who was killed. He was uh, a classmate. He was in a couple of my classes at school. Parker funds his trips through sponsorship. On this expedition, already his third to the pole, he's been collecting snow samples for a climate change project. What matters right now, scientifically, is the composition of the snow. So basically what we're interested in is looking at from the, the sea ice surface down here all the way up to the surface of the snow. It's a record for, for what has happened in terms of the climate over the last five years. All the bottles are going to be packed up and sent to the International Atomic Energy Agency to be analyzed. The data is going to be put into a uh, database and distributed to about 4,500 scientists or more around the world. That's enough. I'm going to send off these bottles and now I'm going to go back to school and do A-level chemistry. You know, I don't... <laughs> it's a bit of a bore, to be honest. Parker will have further distractions from schoolwork. He's planning a return trip to the Arctic in the summer. For Australian guide Eric and his team, things are not going so well. It's day two. They're 25 miles from the pole, and the weather is against them. Well, we've woken up this morning, and it's misty. Visibility is all but gone, and that will slow things down today, unfortunately. We also got some uh, negative drift overnight. We lost maybe four kilometers. We have our work cut out for ourselves, but we knew that at the beginning. We just need to work hard. For Eric's clients, this is a whole new experience. Paul's in his 50s and owns a building company in Essex. The first session was an absolute nightmare. Um, big pressure ridges, a lot of blocks of ice, and we relied hugely on Eric's ability to pick his way through the ice field and the ice blocks. Um, but it went on and on and on. Yeah, try to come across onto that one there. Paul. This frozen sea can be perilous. There is OK, but the middle is open. Without warning, the ice sheets separate, creating areas of open water. We had to take the skis off and actually pull on foot because it was just, for us, too technically difficult to twist and turn on skis and pull toboggans all at the same time. The team are also fighting against the moving ice. Every day, the drift carries them six miles away from the pole. Very tough day today. It's the toughest day that I've ever had with a guided group. They don't come this hard normally. Unfortunately for Eric, things are about to get worse. At Barneo's helipad, Raphael is making his final preparations for the pole. The dogs are loaded onto the chopper, which will carry them to their starting point. For new trainee Nelson, this is his first trip north and his first time in a helicopter. And also the new one in the park is Nelson, nine months old, and uh, it's not too hard. For this kind of young dogs, anyway, is good experience. <laughs> Raphael's clients are a group of friends from Moscow. They travel together all over the world in search of adventure. They've each paid around £26,000 for the trip, inspired by the legend of White Fang, one of literature's most enduring tales. If you read the books of uh, Jack London, it's a <laughs> real adventure. When I was young, we read a lot of books like this because it's an uh, ancient uh, method <laughs> to, to go to the north. Raphael gets the latest ice report from Misha. The information gained from other teams on the ice will help him choose the best place to start his trek. New blue 
pressure is just everywhere, just uh, very chaotic. Chaotic? Chaotic. Chaotic, chaotic. very ca chaotic, yeah. Helicopters taking us to opposite side should be much more easy and also they say from yesterday the message was they get the ice was really nice and, uh, and, and flat and uh, not many open water this means uh, we should manage the 20 minute chopper ride will deliver Raphael's team to the east where the direction of the ice drift will be in their favor the sleds packed with food tents and fuel weigh 150 kilos the 12 dogs will pull the kit and the tourists will ski alongside. Wally. Lead dog Wally on his final mission has taken the flight in his stride. But for Nelson, it's all too much. Stay here, stay here and don't move. Because this dog is be afraid of you. It's not the best of starts in front of clients who've paid handsomely to be here. But Raphael soon has Nelson back in line. The dog should not run away from me, just run after me. Anyway, he's young. Huh? If you will sleep like a dog's uh, 10 hours uh, on snow <laughs> and then... Uh, came to the helicopter, I think he'll also will be exciting. <laughs> the clients are ready and the dogs eager to go. The helicopter heads back to Barnea, leaving the tourists to the ice and their dreams of the pole. This frozen sea may look serene, but its constantly shifting sheets of ice are causing problems back at camp. Two pieces of ice will meet off each other. They don't like off each other, and they start, uh, start to fight. And uh, uh, we can see uh, many broken uh, pieces of ice, sometimes huge, several tons of ice. Variation of pressure ridges. One of beauty of uh, Arctic Ocean. This beauty has created a meter high bump in the middle of the runway. All flights have been suspended. The ice is packed under such colossal pressure that the team must use chainsaws to remove it, layer by layer. In a temperature of minus 25 degrees, the runway team will earn their money today. <laughs> Heading north to the pole, Eric and his team find the ice conditions are in their favor. They have just one day left to reach the Earth's summit, but are making good progress. So we struck upon this freshly frozen lead, solid enough to ski on. It's not going to last very long because we're back into the pack ice, but it's a nice little break, a nice little joy to ski across. Flat and easy. The team are working hard. So far, they're managing to outrun the drift that carries them backwards, away from the pole. If we kept that pace going and pushed it hard, then, you know, we'd likely to get to the pole. When they stop to make camp, they're just 10 miles from the top of the planet. So we did have a very big day today, skiing 18 kilometres, um, all the time going backwards with a negative drift. So probably altogether we skied, uh, I think, at least 25 or 26 kilometers. Everyone's tired but confident and happy. Today was difficult? That's our day. And tomorrow? 
I'm day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But Monday, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe poll tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. The deadline for their flight home is looming. But if the good weather holds, tomorrow they'll be standing at the top of the world. Back at Barneo, everyone is a little on edge. The runway is now fixed, but this flight has come direct from Moscow. On board is Misha's boss, Alexander Orlov. This is Misha's first season in charge at Barneo. It's important he makes a good impression. Alexander hasn't come alone. Misha has the task of looking after Arta Chilangarov, the Russian minister for the Arctic. Now we just had a plane coming in from uh, Russia with some uh, what they call big potatoes, like hot shots. We get from the uh, business uh, world in Russia and also some uh, celebrities. Oh, yeah, uh, helicopter, helicopter. Alexander Orlov made his fortune in business, but he's no stranger to the Arctic. He's a seasoned explorer and set up Barneo in 2002. The guest's plane will remain on standby. The pilot must keep the engines running as the sub-zero temperatures could prevent them from restarting. Our plane is standing parked in the runway and waiting for them. And uh, the plane burns fuel, so it can stay around three hours, not more. Ice Camp Barneo costs millions to run each season. The biggest expense being fuel. The VIPs are whisked up to the pole for the ultimate photo opportunity. Misha must show them a good time. There are just three weeks each year for Barneo to make its money before the summer sun melts the ice. So it doesn't hurt to gain the backing of Russia's movers and shakers. Hot wine at the North Pole. Some people need it. Personally, not so much, but it's tradition. In April, you never have the pole to yourself for very long. Expedition groups that have made the long trek across the ice on foot arrive to be ferried back to camp by helicopter. If you went in, in the North Pole, you sometimes you can see the village of the tents, of the groups of skiers waiting to pick up after successful reach of the North Pole. <laughs> Добрый день. We traveled there skiing for three days. Uh, sleeping over in the tents. It was cool. Uh, it was uh, extremely hard way, for, uh, especially for a woman, for me. It was the first time for me, but uh, it's worth doing this. It's also time for Misha's special guest to head home. The Antonov 74 is specially designed to operate in the harsh Arctic climate. The engine's exhaust gases are blown over the top of the wings to produce extra lift, essential during takeoff on Barneo's short runway. With the plane load of VIPs safely away, 
Misha can relax again. Well done. Well done. Airplane in the air. It's good. While the Russians may be used to the freezing temperatures, for the first time visitor, the Arctic climate can be a shock. Dave Sissons is a banking strategist from London. He's just back from a trip to the pole, and he found dressing for the cold a bit confusing. He's decided to come clean to one of the guides. Day one we set out, I had one base layer, it's pretty cold here, so I thought I might get away with having another base layer. It's windy and chilly as well, so I thought maybe a fleece jacket, and then I had my windproof jacket. Four layers. Yeah. Without knowing, I started to sweat. Um, then, yeah. then we could still see we could still see the evidence of uh, <laughs> how much kit I managed to write off on the first day. With temperatures as low as minus 30, sweat soon freezes solid. I've still got the second base layer from that day, which um, <laughs> which is is quite solid indeed. Yeah, it was it was that, quite wet. Yeah, yeah. That 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 was quite wet. And then and then we got various my, my my hat and my fur buff from my coat. Yeah. That that didn't that didn't do too well either. No. But it's a very normal thing to do. Most people actually uh, dress up too much. Yeah. And then when they start start working, they get too warm oh. and start sweating. No one will sit next to me in the mess tent now, and I figure that's because I'm still wearing the same set. <laughs> Out on the ice, Eric's team are into their final push to the pole. Everything was going well, but the drifting ice is moving more quickly, carrying them further from their goal. And one of the team has fallen ill. Unfortunately, all going against us today. The drift is uh, worse than ever. I think it's increased by uh, maybe a kilometre or two per day in the wrong direction, of course. Uh, the visibility is not spectacular. That slows things down, makes the route finding difficult. Christoph, unfortunately, has got a bit of a tummy bug. It's all conspired against us today. With a sick team member, Maintaining the pace needed to outrun the drift is an almost impossible task. I have no information only from you. Uh... At Camp Barneo, Misha is getting the daily position updates from teams heading to the pole. 164.20. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, everything is good with people. But he has to pass on bad news about Eric's progress. Eric Phillips uh, uh, did stop uh, 10 miles uh, from North Pole. Uh, he decided uh, uh, it's finished for him. Against Misha's advice, Eric's team chose to walk against the drift of the ice. But slowed down by illness in the team and bad weather, Eric calls in a chopper to pick them up, 10 miles short of the pole. You need to respect drift. That's all. If you don't respect it, uh, you will uh, be punished. What actually happened? After battling through blizzards and sub-zero temperatures, it's a disappointing end to their adventure. Greetings. How are we going, Eric? Ah, uh, not the best. We feel a little gypped, a little uh, short chain. Unsuccessful teams are often flown to the pole to achieve their dream of standing at the top of the world. But the pilot has refused to take them, and Eric's group have been flown straight back to camp. People pay a lot of money and I don't think ever before in the history of, you know, Barneo operations, a team hasn't actually stood at the North Pole. And this team was fantastic. And I promised, if we don't make it to the North Pole, then we fly in. That's always happened in the past. And suddenly, for the first time, it doesn't happen. 
The landing was not so nice. The helicopter landed just a couple meters near uh, crack. And the uh, uh, chief of pilot said, uh, it's too risky. Uh, I can't uh, take a risk uh, to fly with people to the North Pole. And he decided to fly back. Ultimately, the pilot makes the decision whether it's safe to fly. Not even Misha can overrule him. No, 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 no there's no guarantee, absolutely. In the mess room, the team make their disappointment clear. You stay in North Pole many, many, for only opportunity for me. And I, I'm sad, you know, I triste. Sad, yeah, yeah, I understand, I, I, I agree, I, yeah. Uh, Misha might be quietly gratified that we didn't make it to the pole because his advice was to be dropped off where we would have an easy drift into the pole. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say something bad. I just wanted to it's, give it's you... No, it's nothing bad at your I opinion. spent on uh, this ice uh, almost two years just sleeping in the tent of uh, drifting ice. Yeah. It's, uh, believe me, it's a big experience. It would have been great to come back with success under our belts and equally stare Misha in the face and say, <laughs> we told you so. Um, it didn't work out that way either. Uh, I'm not happy that I'm right. I knew exactly it will happen. And I uh, warn guys, if they are not uh, very happy, it means uh, they need to ask, first of all, from uh, themselves. We had hoped to have been able to see the GPS showing exactly 90. We got within 10 miles. Um, you know, hey-ho, it's one of those things. One group has had better luck with the weather during their trip. Today is my birthday. Yeah. Raphael's dog sled team had the drift in their favour, successfully reaching the top of the world. Yeah, quite easy this year. It was really no problem. Nice weather and uh, easy ice. It's been the last trip for lead dog Wally before his retirement. But new recruit Nelson will make a fine replacement. The old leader, it was a little bit tired. I think it was a little bit too much for him anyway. He is now loose and running to helicopter like he should. Oh, he already is inside and waiting for the flight to Borneo. <laughs> Back at camp, what better way to celebrate than with traditional Russian delicacies? Vodka, raw garlic and cured pig fat known as sala. Sala, salo, salo, salo. Bacon, no. Salo, good. <laughs> and salo with garlic. It's, uh, mm, it's wonderful. На здоровье. На здоровье. Просто. Просто. Ice Camp Barneo's short season has come to an end. The rising temperature will soon melt the frozen surface of the ocean. For 18 days, the most northern airport in the world has turned the dreams of hundreds of people into reality. For the next 11 months, no human will set foot on this most extraordinary spot on the planet. Planning for next season will begin in just a few days. But as the temporary town is packed away, the staff can think of home. Barneo finished. Yeah. We go home now. I'm very excited to go home. <laughs> First of all. Then I'm a little bit sad that everything is gone. Fortunately, everything was very good. And now Barneo is... Uh, over. Bye bye Arctic and uh, uh, hello my uh, family. <laughs> <laughs>